Hey folks, it's Fridgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We are just struggling back up the hill again so that we can go and get another load of timber and continue on with our earning piles and piles of cash. Now, the plan is, as quickly as possible, we want to be getting our Ponzi Scorpion. Or that's what we've been going for. But people have been saying, why am I going for the Ponzi Scorpion? Why don't I go for something else? Uh, there is another tree harvester. I think it's a John Deere one. I don't know what the price set on that one is. This one here, the reason I'm not going for this is very large trees cannot be processed. So half the trees we won't be able to cut down with it um that's why i wasn't going for that one these two there's not a lot of difference between them my personal preference is for the ponzi scorpion and i have found that the scorpion is able to reach further down a bank than this one when i've been using them previously now maybe that's been patched out and it's been changed but i did find that the scorpion it's also got a longer reach as well that one right there it doesn't have as long a reach as what the Scorpion does. This one, does it say on there? It doesn't actually say um, what the reach is. But the Scorpion's got a longer reach, I found. And it's able to reach further down. So I definitely consider the 5,000 difference in it. It's definitely worth spending the extra five grand. And when you're spending that kind of money, nearly half a million dollars, uh, I would say it's definitely worth it. Now, the other thing. Some people have been saying to me that I shouldn't be going for these. Now, personally, I like those. But, I mean, these are swamp tracks. And when you're working on steep slopes, you lose a lot of grip with these. They're not so hot with the grip um, because of uh, being so wide, the Kovacs ones. Uh, you got these right here. Now, these would probably be a little bit better. They've got um, bigger lugs and stuff on them. Uh, the Evo Baltic ones, with the they've got more lugs and spikes. Um, so they would probably work better on um, any hills or anything like that. Or the Magnum ones like this. See, they stick out a lot more. Those would probably work better. Now, I like the tracks. I want to have the tracks. Some people have said that I wouldn't really need the tracks in the conditions that we're going to be using them. And you're probably right, I probably shouldn't go for the tracks, but I still like them. I like the colour contrast, I think it looks really cool. Um, so purely for, you know, looking cool, that's why I'm going to go and get them. That's why I'm getting those tracks, is mainly because I think they look cool. There's no actual logical reason for me to go and use them. Uh, I just think that they look cool. And so, yeah, I would, I, I would like to get them for that. Um... Probably not my soundest set of reasoning. I normally provide a good, strong, solid reason for getting anything. Um, and I, I don't normally go for, I think it looks cool. But this time I am. This time I'm going, it. I think it looks cool. And that's why I'm going for that particular um, edition. But I mean, 8,000, when you're looking at that much money, I don't think 8,000 is a huge amount of difference. And I really do like them. I really do like the look of the tracks on those things, which is why I'd really like to get them. Now, I did have some trees cut down over there. I don't remember, because it's been a week since I've done any recording, if I had very many. I don't think I had very many logs left over here anyway. No, I didn't. There's, there is a few over here, but there's not very many. So I'm not going to worry about those. I'm going to come back over this side, and I'm going to cut trees down up on uh, this top corner. I would really like to cut that tall tree down there, but that one's on the wrong side of the tracks, so we're not going to be able to reach it. So what we'll do is we will focus on just working on some trees on this corner here and get some of these down. Um, grass growth at the moment is fairly low. Um, I would say that we're probably going to make up most of our money now just from doing this we might get a bit of wool to sell there may be some wool to sell we could do that uh but honestly i think most i think the money that we're going for now is going to come from doing the logs um we can chop up a few more trees here get these loaded up get some loads down to the sawmill it might actually be better if i just cut a few more trees down up here and then start working at the bottom of the hill 
Because then I'm not going to have to take the trees anywhere near as far. I'm not going to have to travel as far with each load, which I think would be infinitely preferable to coming all the way up to the top of the hill each time. It's going to speed things up just a little bit, and we want to speed things up as much as we possibly can now so that we can keep things moving. I'll chop that one down there, and we'll get the next ones over. Uh, let's go like that. There. Right, take you down. Um, yeah, we... we I hate it when it does that. I really hate it when it does that. Right, I'm going to try and chop this one so that it falls into it. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to do my absolute bestest to... Is that going to... The, nope, that hasn't worked either. Right, um, yeah, we, 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 we want to get this money as quickly as possible. And I'm kind of trying to decide what we should go for next. After we've gone and got it. Once we've gotten all the money. Once we've we've done that bit. What should we go for next? And I was actually thinking. That probably the most sensible thing to go for next. Would be another tractor. And I mean it doesn't. Not necessarily a second. Uh, like a, a replacement tractor. But a. Uh, no, not necessarily another tractor. An additional tractor. Uh, but a replacement tractor. We sell the tractor that we've got and we buy a new one. And doing that should speed things up a little bit more because we'll be able to go up and down the hills a little bit faster. Um, we'll be able. To, there's a lot of things extra that we'll be able to do. I mean, yes, it's expensive buying another tractor. Um, we could also consider the possibility of just saving up money and buying another tractor. We will be moving into arable crops fairly soon. Um, but we've got to get a combine to be able to do that. Uh, we've got most of the rest of the stuff now ready for doing the arable crops, but we are still going to need to buy a combine. And I'm wondering if we was to have another tractor, we've got grass fields that we can cut and we can keep working the grass fields. Right, we, we, there's no reason that we can't keep working the grass fields. Uh, buy another tractor and we'd be able to uh, work the grass fields and work the logs at the same time because we can have hired help doing mowing and stuff like that. And then we can do logs and we can also run loads of logs to the sawmill. Uh, but we've also then got the possibility of selling our rear-mounted mower, the side-mounted mower, and buying a dual mower instead so that we've got the proper butterfly mowers. I don't think the mower, that, that the tractor that we've got at the moment, is really quite up to the task of running a full set of butterfly mowers. Don't think it's going to be able to cope with it. I also don't think that that tree branch right there... It doesn't like it when they're up in the air. Really doesn't like it when they're up in the air. It doesn't like to sort of grasp hold of it. Well, sometimes. I th partly, I think it's just the way that the, the logs are rendered into the game. Let's go forward a little bit. There we go. Take that one out. And one more bit right there. Okay. Uh, is that a full load yet? I don't think that's a load yet. It's actually, it's not far off of a full load. Let's cut down that tree there. And then we'll take a we'll take our load from here and run that over the mill. And then, like I said, we're going to start working from the bottom. We'll cut all the trees down at the bottom of the hill. Start working on those. And then we can sort of work our way up the hill. It's going to save us having to drag all the way back up here each time we've emptied out. And yes, we will be coming back up here pretty quickly afterwards. Um... I'd like to, like I said, I want to get another tractor, um, but I'm sort of thinking that we're not likely to get another tractor before we've finished most of this section here. I mean, another tractor for helping with that would also be really good because it means that we'll be able to use the second tractor for um, helping when we come to, like, start cutting everything out. Because that takes a while. That, that does take quite a long time. Okay, I want to bring this one up here. We want to change the side because it always defaults to the left hand side doesn't it so that's now on the right hand side and it should now start loading when I press B so we go up round this way up to the top 
I'll go all the way over to that small one that we cut down at the top of the track over there. Start with that one and then work our way down. Um, so if I was to sort of stick with a particular brand while I'm doing this playthrough as much as possible, what brand would you like me to stick with? Uh, we've got New Holland that we could go for. There's quite a selection of New Holland machinery. Uh, New Holland combines, New Holland tractors, and various different New Holland machines as well that we could go with. Uh, Case has also got the same, and, well, John Deere doesn't have quite so much. There are mods for John Deere's coming out, so we could go for John Deere if you wanted. I know that John Deere, because it's at the top, it, it, it is generally considered to be one of the most successful agricultural brands, uh, at least at the moment. Um, it has a very strong love-hate thing going on. And this is, I always fight this is the same with gaming. Like, Minecraft is one of the most popular games out there. World of Warcraft is, um, one of the most popular MMOs out there. And therefore, people tend to react more strongly about these things. You know, you tell someone about Warcraft or Minecraft, and they either really love it, or they will just about spit on you because you are wanting to play those games because, oh, they're not cool. Um, and I get the strong impression that John Deere is much the same. John Deere has got a reputation that it has built up over many, many years of being absolutely wonderful. Now, yes, there are issues with some of their machines. There are issues with every brand of machine. So John Deere are not unique in this. They are definitely not unique or alone or different or special or anything else. Uh, but they are a successful brand and there's no denying it. So some people might want me to see John Deere. Uh, might want to see John Deere in here. So I would just caution anybody against putting some really nasty comments in the comment section about anybody that says yes they would like to see John Deere. Because quite frankly... I'm not going to be putting up with it. Yeah, if you don't like John Deere, that's fine. You can say so. But you don't have to be really, really nasty to people that do. Um, I'm saying this because I've seen some pretty horrible things just in the last few weeks said about people who said they like John Deere. And there's no need for it. There really isn't a need to get like that oh, because somebody else likes a different coloured tractor to you. <laughs> Honestly. So... I'm asking here, if I see any of those sorts of comments in the comment section, I'll delete them, and depending on the severity of the comment, I'll ban you from commenting on the channel altogether. Um, I'm not having that kind of nonsense on here. So, but, I, I mean, I realise I'm, for the most part, preaching to the choir, because uh, most of you, I get the impression, feel much the same way. There's, you know, we are allowed to have different opinions, and we don't have to get really nasty with each other just because someone has an opinion that is different to your own. And that's what I like about the community that is building up around this channel, um, is that you you all sort of fit in with this, um, this outlook that I have that, uh, yes, it is okay to have a different opinion to somebody else. That is an acceptable thing, and it seems to be something that a lot of people don't can't get their heads around, that someone else is allowed to like something that's different to you. So yes, there will be some who want John Deere, and there will be some who don't want John Deere. That is fine. We can all accept that. So anyway, moving on. I've said my piece. I, the, the main reason is because uh, like 10 minutes ago, I seen some rather nasty posts um, about uh, whether John Deere should be allowed or shouldn't be allowed, or there should be more, or there shouldn't be more, yada, yada, yada. You, you get the idea. Um, but, um, yeah, and, and then it just made me think about that. Right, see, we only had 13,000 there, but that's because I wanted to wrap up the stuff I was doing at the top of the hill fairly quickly so we can get on with cutting down fresh trees down the bottom of the hill. There are still some trees at the top that I haven't picked up, but we'll go back and we'll get those later. Um, we won't worry about them right now. We'll start working on trees at the bottom of the hill. So we're on 304, 305,000 pretty much. Uh, we want to get all the way up to 400 and... Where's well, about 450,000, 55,000 I think, 450,000, something like that. Um, with the little extra that we want. So we will have to... 
we, we, we've got a few more loads that we've got to do. I mean, if we do 20,000 per load, roughly, then we need another seven loads. And it's going to have to be big loads, which means that we are going to clear all of the trees that are on that hill. They're all going to be gone. We're not going to have any of those left whatsoever. So I'll bring, I'm going to put the tractor right there and I'm going to stop it. And then we're going to wander over this way and we're going to start chopping trees down. We'll start, we'll let them fall down that way into the field. Like that. There we go. And we're back to this job again. This job does take a while. We have spent a lot of our time chopping down trees. Eventually, we will get to the point where we don't have to be chopping trees down. At least not by hand, anyway. Um, all the time. We, we will eventually reach the point where we don't need to be doing this all the time. It's going to take a little while, but we will get there. Now, we've got 49 sheep at the moment. I'm thinking we've got time to cut down and um, sell one more load this evening. The time scale that we're running on. Um, so, once we've done this one more load, and this one we will actually fill up properly. Uh, once we've done this one load, we can then skip the night and when we can sort of take a look at uh, wool and uh, how much we've got and whether or not we are wanting to go and sell any. Because 10,000 is, well, it's, it's 10 grand. So if we've got two pallets of wool, that's going to save us one. About a thousand is what we're hoping for, right? We want about, a th we're sort of aiming for around about a thousand per pallet of, uh, well, per thousand litres. So a pallet of wool is going to be 10,000. Um, it's not massive amounts, it isn't, but it's a continual supply for actually very little input. Uh, we've only got to put in a bit of water and a bit of grass, and we don't really need to put anything else in. And this makes it very, very good. This makes it very easy to stay on top of. And it's a continual sort of source of income coming in, which I like. And which I think is absolutely wonderful. So we want to make the most of that. By the time... So if, if we've got two pallets to sell, that's 20,000. It's going to basically it's going to save us a load, isn't it? Right? We save a load by selling some wool, so we've only got to do six trailer loads of timber. Uh, six trailer loads of timber is a little bit quicker than seven trailer loads of timber, although the, by the time I mess around with doing the... And, of course, I completely forgot about um, the 30 times loading penalty for loading, so what I'll do is, for the next load, I'll set the time scale on to 60 times. And that'll make up for the last one that I didn't do properly. There we go. I've, I've solved the problem already. We've got until 8 o'clock, but I very much doubt that I'm going to be able to load everything up. So what we might have to do is chop down a few trees, which I'm doing like this, a few at a time, then trim them and chop them up. Take you down, and I'll take you down as well. Do that one at the same time. There. There. We will trim them, chop them up, have them lying on the ground, and then I suspect we will need to just go and skip the night and then come back and do the loading in the morning because I don't think we're going to have time to do it all this evening. We'll finish that bit there. That one I just want to cut in half. The difficult thing with doing this loading is that we need to be going up and down the hill, and this is one of the reasons I want another tractor, is because the tractor we've got is not quite powerful enough to be pulling the trailer up the hill. It's it's a little bit too much for it to go all the way up the hill. This is quite a big tree. I didn't think this one was quite this big. Alright. That's good. More timber for us. The bigger the tree, the better. Get a lot more out of it. It's nice and big. And these here, like that, that trunk there, that is nice and thick as well. There's a good amount on that. There's a lot of timber in it. Which means, because it, it sort of works, the game works it out by, well, I don't know if it's the cubic foot or the cubic um, millimetre or what. But, um, yeah, the, the game does seem to work it out fairly well with actual volume of timber. Um, you've got some deciding factors. Now, somebody did do, I'm pretty sure Patreon Gracemark did do some testing for us. Uh, a little while ago, to which is the best timber length to go for. 
and I'm pretty sure his conclusion was between 7 meters and 9 meters you get the maximum price anything between 7 and 9 meters you get the maximum price and then it starts to tail off it's not a really sharp drop when you go 6 to 10 meters but anything above 10 or below 6 you get a significant reduction in um, money coming back from your timber so we we want to avoid anything shorter than six which is probably that or anything longer than ten but that's why you want the Ponzi scorpion it's faster right as soon as you've got it like that you then press the button a couple of times and it goes through and it um it, it throws the branch through throws the timber through stripping off all the branches and chopping it off at a very precise eight meter length which is absolutely spot on perfect now if the seven meter length is spot on perfect um then i think there is like this trailer although you can load up um you can move the loading position on this trailer and it's a really cool feature that this trailer has got however the downside to it is that you've got to have a lorry a semi uh pulling the thing in order to be able to use all of the features correctly if you've just got a dolly and a tractor pulling it you can't use all of the features and you can't alter the loading position on the trailer unfortunately uh, so because of that, we're not going to be able to use the setup that we've got right now for selling timber. But I would like to be able to get a truck here, a lorry here, to pull that trailer and to pull some other trailers as well. Um, if I could put something on there. But I've been looking at lorries and I've been looking also at ones specific for the US because the thing with the UK is that we've got things like if you look in the shop we've got things here in europe like the tatra phoenix right there that agro truck right there okay this one you've got the standard configuration you've also got on the back you can have a trailer hitch on the back and a standard hitch um the wheels are for off-road like this this thing is beautiful for doing a lot of off-road work it's absolutely wonderful for that kind of um thing you've got the man right here as well and if you notice They've got a very short wheelbase. Now, this is because in Europe, we tend to have shorter spaces. That is a very long wheelbase. This thing grounds out on the smallest thing. But that is more of a road truck. And I've been told that this one is more of a field truck. But there's still a longer wheelbase on that one than there is on that one. Look at this one here. Look at the distance between those wheels. He's not going to be grounding out on anything very easily. Whereas this one has got a much longer distance between there. A little hump or something in between. And that one gets stuck and he's not going anywhere. So I want to know. Could and oh, like the road runner right there. That's that's the real um, the road one. A huge long distance. That's not suitable for off-road work. That's, that's really not suitable for off-road work. Uh, so what I want to know is. Do you have any mods that are suitable for off-road work for a US style truck or a, a truck that is built in the US. Now I know that the cab over design used to be common in the US um, and that is because up until 1983 uh, you had limitations on the total length of your vehicles. Um, those limitations were drastically changed in 1983. I, I believe it's 1983. Um, I was researching this the other day for um, something else and uh, as once those regulations were changed longer trucks became the norm um, one the cab the engine in front uh, so the cab behind the engine rather than cab over the engine like we have in Europe and one of the big reasons we have that is because it keeps the overall length of the vehicle a little bit shorter um, but there, another reason that we have that is not just for the length of the vehicle being shorter. It's also, be, well, it is to keep the length of the vehicle, total vehicle shorter, but it also makes manoeuvring a lot easier. We tend to have a lot more, um, especially like towns and villages and that in uh, Europe, tend to have much smaller streets, much tighter turns and things like that and the longer configuration with the engine in front 
it's more difficult to get round um it's just more difficult to get round the streets it, it's altogether a trickier process being able to get anywhere when your cab is um or when your truck is that much longer you can't see down in front of you very easily either it's more difficult to see right under your nose when the cab is is way out in front of you uh, or when the front of the vehicle is way out in front of you with the cab over design you can literally just look down and you can see the very front of your vehicle and that makes maneuvering a lot easier it really does make a huge difference and that's another sort of advantage of having the cab over design so i know that there are cab overs um they are getting less and less common in the u.s um but certainly older ones there's plenty of those around but my question really is what would you use for heavy off-roading if you got heavy off-road stuff uh, off-road work to do what sort of vehicle are you going to be using are you still going to be using a um a, a cab behind type uh, situation you know the, the cab um, the, the inline design or are you going to be using a cab over design which which one would usually be gone for in the situation that I'm talking about where you want really something that is going to um, be able to do some serious off-roading stuff but also be able to be used on the road as well now I'm going to have to stop right there I'm going to stop loading and I'm going to switch that one off and then I'm going to just knock that back down to five times speed a minute. And we're going to have to go back over to the house and we're going to have to get some sleep. And then we can come out in the morning, we can finish loading, and then that's going to be it. That's going to be loaded. So we'll have loaded up another one, but then that's going to be the end of the episode. The grass is growing now. Uh, we've fertilized it 100%. It just says growth growing. It doesn't actually tell us anything more than just growing. Um, oh, by the way. I have added another mod to uh, the list, which is one that was on the mod hub, which I thought looked really cool, um, as a potential house for us to live in. Now, we got farmhouses. That's the farmhouse that we get, which is a pretty grotty place, really, all the stuff in it. I don't really like it. This one here, it's, I know that it's half a million dollars. It is a little extravagant, but I like the idea of building that one. I like the idea of holding out. I mean, maybe we could upgrade to the caravan. We get rid of the tent, we upgrade to the caravan, so that's our home for a little while. And then we go for that one. We skip this one altogether and we go for the half million manor house. I, I like the idea of doing that. I really do. I think that would be a very cool house to live in. Okay, we're close enough, so we will go for 11 hours of kip like that. And we lose a little bit of money overnight from our loan interest of seven grand. I mean, we more than covered that with one of our, um, with the load that we did. 12,000 on that load. And what do we got over here? We've got that little part pallet, which we will get rid of. And I've now got two full pallets, so I've got 20,000. Right in here, this is wool pallet reusable. We got the 20,000 ones in here. So we should have plenty of money available if the money is going to be offered and wool at the moment is 835 that is not sufficient i would like it to be more than that more than that we'll hold it until we get more than a thousand um silage is 205 so that's way down let's have a look at the actual sheep we've now got 50 sheep in here cleanliness is down a little bit but my tractor is busy so we'll leave that for now and we won't worry about it although Oh, cleanliness is 63%. 96% productivity is fine. We're quite happy. We, we, we are quite happy to run that. Uh, we have run out of time for today's episode, so we will finish picking up the timber in our next episode, and then we will go and sell it, and we can get back to uh, chopping down a few more trees. It doesn't look like we're going to be um, doing any... Well, we won't be doing any mowing today. And it doesn't look like the wool is ready to be sold either because of the prices. So we'll have to deal with that next time as well. Uh, next, well, it'll probably be next week. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.